theater in Africa, well, in Kenya, because that's the only place I tried from yeah. the whole Africa. Um, it's very dynamic. People are dynamic and spontaneous, which is good for art. I want to incorporate um, Kenyan culture into my world, because I came to Kenya with my Polish world. Yeah. My, my biggest fun in this when people come to the theater and I see all those 400 something people and they love it so much. That's the best feeling ever. Tonight we've got a treat for you. An exclusive interview with Kazia Mesaros, the creative force behind Kenya's theatre scene and wife to Ambassador Salt Mesaros. With 15 years in puppetry and children's theatre, she's a true maestro. Not only is she the brains behind the EU Climate Diplomacy Week 2023, but her puppet show, The Good, the Bad and the Wolf, also won the Best Children's Play Award at the Kenya Theatre Awards. And now she's back directing Leo's search for a new home. A heartwarming tale tackling environmental issues head on. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa and I know you love Kezia's story. Kasia, how are you yeah, doing? I'm good, thank yeah. you. Nice to see you finally. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. My name is Kasia Mesaros. I am an actress by profession. And uh, now in Kenya, I am a director of theater for children, and I do puppets. These puppetry. are my friends, yes, puppet theater. Yeah, just before we get to puppetry, I understand that you've been in Kenya for nine years now. Yes. How do you find the country so far? It's my home. You Nyumba. love it? Nyumba. Nyumba yetu. Nyumbani. <laughs> Have you learned any Swahili? I tried. You tried? I know some words that I can make people laugh at me. Yeah. when they hear it. Yeah. Uh, my husband is learning though, he is a teacher, so he could be now speaking full, so, well, yeah, quite a good Swahili, but I mentioned to you before, that my energy goes now into Hungarian language. Because you're trying to learn your husband's because language. Because I'm Polish and he's Hungarian, so I'm trying to learn his language first. And I was telling you, Polish, you know, on its own is also equally a difficult yes. language, even for me. Yes. Yeah. So I'm imagining a combination of Pol yeah. Polish and now Hungarian yeah. and Swahili. So we shouldn't get you, you a Polish husband. No. no. Something easier. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How is puppetry going for you? Um, you know, it's been a big part of my life. Yeah. I'm trying to count years. So I studied acting in Poland. That was four years. And that I was introduced to puppetry then. Um, then I worked in the theater with puppets. That's another eight years. Then I will, I'm here for nine years and I've been doing something here and there. So I don't know, how, where are we now? I'm an artist, I can't uh, add up. So yeah, it's, uh, here it's a completely new adventure. It's a completely new adventure and like I see it, this is not a common thing, especially in Kenya. So yes. how do you find your way around and where do you even get the ideas? Here, mm -hmm. everything is here. I just see the pictures, I just see people around, I see topics, I see important, like what's culturally speaking, what's important for people here. And I have to adapt, I want to adapt, I want to incorporate um, Kenyan culture into my world because I came to Kenya with my Polish world, theatrical world. And now I'm trying to combine those two things. So I have a Kenyan cast, Kenyan actors, Kenyan artists, Kenyan composer, um, a Kenyan person who um, did the puppets. Design. Based on, yeah. design was done in Poland, but still you cannot just bring something from Poland and, or Hungary and, and just present here, because here people have different uh, sensitivity, perspective, cultural backgrounds, so you have to do theater for the audience that you have here, which is a Kenyan audience. So how have you managed to add bits of Kenyanism into your work? 
I think a big part of it is the fact that I've been here for nine years. <clears throat> and I know quite a lot of people. I have my life, my whole life is here. My children are here. I gave birth to both of my children here. So you start setting the roots and a little bit you start feeling the country more and more. Um, you speak to people and you listen to your actors. Not easy <laughs> for not, the director, not, but not still. Easy, yeah. uh, even the, the script for the show, I did two shows in 2023 in Kenya. The first show was in March uh, for kids. And the other, this show that we are working now on, it was originally done in June 2023. And in both cases, we used uh, we we used you know pieces of advice from Kenyan people when we wanted to do something in Swahili. I don't speak Swahili, but we do speak Swahili on stage. But funny thing, when I uh, when I brought a Swahili script, Swahili translated script, yeah. to the rehearsal. The Kenyan people I work with, they were like, what does this mean? I'm this like, guys, what's your language? Yeah. And they said, no, we don't, we don't speak like that. So we changed. Because I want it people to... It has to suit it the has people, to, the It audience. has to adapt. Yeah. It has to be, you know, the script for me is something that needs to be alive. So we work on it during the whole show. If you ask my actors, uh, do you have a final version of the script? They will say... Not with, not so with as Sasha. a producer, because I understand you're doing lots of productions all by yourself before mm -hmm. perhaps you share with the rest of the team. But as a producer, having, not having you know, a lot of the understanding of the Kenyan culture. Mm -hmm. So do you have someone that you, know, you have to work with on board before yeah. you know, the, the whole script or whatever comes mm -hmm. out? Yes, I ask people. I work, my assistant is Kenyan, I have Kenyan actors, I, I worked with Kenyan producers before for, with my first show, so um, I learned from them a lot uh, as well. And they were the ones who told me, um, this is not funny for us. What you wrote is not funny, this is funny. Yeah. And so the first, sense of humor is different. There are things that I wouldn't put in the show, mm -hmm. but then I see people love it. So I'm like, fine with me. You have to we just have to people. meet halfway. You have to remember that you do theater for people, and that doesn't matter which country. That's my philosophy of doing theater. This is an entertainment for the people. So not just my vision. My vision, but it has to be adapted. Why are you focusing on kids' show? Because kids? I have kids. Oh. And at some point I realized I would like them to see that mommy actually does theater. How many kids now? I have two kids. Born in Kenya? Yes. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's their home. Yeah. So I wanted them to see <clears throat> something that I think kids in uh, Kenya don't have a chance to see that much. A full puppet show for children with professional theatrical puppets. So well, I'm interested again, because you are talking about, you know, plastic pollution. But, you know, why would that even be a concern to you as an artist? For the artist, what's important, apart from the artistic vision, is what you talk about. So I always tell my actors, you shouldn't get onto stage if, you don't, if your character doesn't have a problem. Then don't do theater. So like every movie talks about something important, or should. I feel that teaching a lesson on plastic pollution, which is very important nowadays, we talk, we finally talk about environment in, around the world through a friendly story that children would understand. That's a great thing to give a lesson through fun. So we talk about important things. Don't throw your very simple lesson. Don't throw your bottle after drinking your soda into the ocean. Pick it up and throw it into the dustbin. It's much better. It really changes the life of those creatures that are there. So children associate with those little uh, characters, yeah. the fish, and they say, oh, mommy, they will say maybe next time when they are in Mombasa, they will say, mommy, we cannot throw this here because a little turtle Leo will eat it. And these are true 
pictures. You, when, when, when I, I was writing the script, I scrolled through the internet and I saw those pictures, you know, of fish with plastic around. That's heartbreaking. It is. It's heartbreaking. And when we speak about the water and the ocean, and basically, you know, the ecosystem, yes. the marine ecosystem, are you thinking of taking this perhaps to the coastal areas? That's or is it dream. just in Nairobi? No, that's yeah. my dream. The show was uh, founded by European Union um, delegation to Kenya because we all believe that that's so important to present around the whole Africa, around the world. I actually want to go take this show even to other continents. But my first plan and dream is to take it to the coast of Kenya, maybe Mombasa, set up a stage on the beach, invite everyone who is just passing by, if it's a Kenyan person, if it's a child, if it's an adult, it's fishermen, or tourists from the hotel. I just want all of them to come and watch this on the beach. So when we talk about you doing this part of thing, you know, in this part of the world, yeah, I assume there are challenges, just like any other Kenyan would be doing something, you know, either away from their homeland or even in their own country. So what challenges have you encountered along the way? Where to start? Every day, every day brings something. I, I would say doing theater in Africa, well, in Kenya, because that's the only place I tried from the whole Africa. Um, it's very dynamic. People are dynamic and spontaneous, which is good for art. I, uh, I enjoy working with Kenyan actors because whatever, whichever idea I bring, they just pick it up and they just do it without any... Um, oh, we're not going to try this, no, that's this, that's that. They just very spontaneously, they try, they improvise, which is very important in developing yourself as an artist. But of course, uh, Hakuna Matata, Pole Pole, all that stuff I have to go through yeah. with my very European and like disciplined on time mentality and training I got in, in the field of theater. Um, so we manage. It's a lesson for me. It's a journey. Like for little Leo in the show, it's a journey for me to do. Now I'm doing everything, uh, producing myself and uh, directing. And secretly, I'm going to say that I'm going to perform even myself on stage. The actors are sitting there. They don't know it yet. Yeah. How <laughs> surprised. We are talking about that behind, back, yes, behind the scenes. Yes, they don't know that. Yeah. They will just see me on stage one day. Yeah. And... Um, so yes, you know, I, I understand, I, I'm learning every day that uh, my show is not the only thing that uh, people uh, care about on this planet now when I'm doing it, although it, it used to be full day, full time work for me when I was in my country. Here people do different things to survive as artists. Being an artist is a struggle, it's a, I would say it's a, it's a calling. You need to be really passionate yes. about it. Yeah. But in order to survive, you have to do Other different things. things. So I, I'm slowly learning that lesson that it's not possible always to be here for 12 hours as I would uh, love Expect. them to be. Yes, yeah. because they have to do other things, and that's fine. And you know the magic, the beauty, and I really still don't know how this works. It happens at the end of the day. Things happen. Things get done. I don't know how, yeah. and that's why we love being in Africa, because with this Hakuna Matata, Pole Pole, Haraka Haraka, Hakuna Baraka, Baraka yes. Yeah. Uh, at first you just you know pull hair out of your head, but then you're like, if I stress, if I don't stress, things get done. People have this ability. Uh, just to put together, uh, put actions together at the end of the day, and and it's great. So. When we were having a conversation, Kasha, you were telling me about how difficult sometimes it's been for you to fund, you know, these costs production yes. just before, of course, the European Union came about to support the plastics initiative, for instance. Yes. Yeah. So how have you been managing? And just let me in a little bit. You know, the challenges prior to, you know, you getting a little bit of funding. I honestly don't know who to ask. I, if, 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 I, if I were a Kenyan artist, I wouldn't know where to go. 
honestly. So <clears throat> uh, it's now I think it's so easy in Europe. You just apply for the funds and uh, often you get it. Here I wouldn't know where to start. Um, so I'm blessed with support from the European Union. But with the, within the first production in March 2023, I worked with Aperture Africa. And they were the ones who funded the whole project. And it's not always sure if, if it's going to get back, the money yeah. you spend, if, if you're going to get it back, if you're going to sell the tickets or not. Uh, we did OK. The, the, the auditorium was full. People loved that show. It was something completely new. People came to me and said they, they had never seen anything like that in Nairobi. They had a completely different uh, imagination, like concept of puppet theater. Yes. And suddenly they saw something, what I do, what you're going to see. So that was great. But still, it doesn't mean it's not proportional. The amount of work you put into, into the funds you get. So, it's a lot of struggle. You have to pay for everything, yeah? So the, the, the venue, I, I really admire Kenyan artists. I, I don't know how they do it. You don't know how they do it. I think it's more about passion. Yeah. How does it feel for you to be in an area that is not so much exploited? Feels great, uh, but it's a challenge to convince people that yes. it's uh, worth coming and watching it. and. Uh, so it's something new I'm doing. I'm saying I do a revolution, but in a good way, uh, theatrical uh, revolution. Mm, but again, you see, when I say puppet show, people think, oh, something silly for uh, kindergarten yeah. children. Yeah. And we're talking about a profession, professional puppet theater that is very strong in the world, around the world. So slowly, slowly, I'm bringing it to, to Nairobi. I have now my theater that is called, and now a, a question to you, yeah. a quiz. Karagozi Theater. What does Karagozi mean? Gosh, I don't know. No idea. What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> In Swahili, it means puppet. Oh, Ooh, OK. Karagozi Theater. So I just called my production house, that it's just me now, yeah. um, Karagozi Theater, which means a puppet theater, as simple as that. So this production is under Karagozi Theater, and European Union um, brand. I, I was having that conversation with you prior and asking, you have the option to stay home, be a housewife, take care of your two beautiful <laughs> kids. Why are you stressing yourself out here when it's not like you really need to? And so I what answer the, to you what, that... What is the push? Yes. Yeah. I answer that, well, if you ask me now, at this stage of the production, when there's so many things, and I'm asking myself, why, why am I doing it? Yeah. Why can't I just sit on my terrace, drink and my enjoy coffee? enjoy coffee, watch the birds, and you know, stuff yes. like that? Yeah. What's the push? It's just a calling. You just want to do something. You just feel this art as an artist. You have a vision. You just want to do it. I, my, my biggest fun in this, when people come to the theater and I see all those 400-something people, and they love it so much. That's the best feeling ever. And then I see my kids sitting, and they love it. How has the market here received your work so far? I don't normally praise myself, but I would say it's a uh, teamwork, but people loved it. People loved it so much. I have to tell you, they really loved it. When you see a bunch of kids screaming, and my, my shows are very interactive. Yeah, you're telling me about the one you did at, um, was it? What, what is the name of that school you're telling me? Uh, no, we had one in Jane Bavan in yes, Russia, yes, and yes. then we brought, Wow, 1,500 children from Kenyan public schools. Yeah, and I was we fascinated them. by yeah. the fact that you just also pulled, you know, kids from unfortunate backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me why. Because kids are kids. And it doesn't matter if, you know, they, they all deserve to receive this kind of entertainment. 
So this was a common project with European Union and the um, EU ambassador herself. She's very passionate about bringing culture to all sorts of kids, no matter where they live. So we said, okay, let's bring them. So we organized buses. We literally brought children to the theater and we took them back home and they loved the show. Well, I hope it was very quiet at first. I was scared that they don't like it, but they were actually mesmerized because they had never seen anything like that, like a three meter long whale puppet on yeah, stage yeah. singing a song. So perhaps you demonstrate for me a little bit of you it's, know, uh, everything so yes, you have. These are eels. Yeah. These are puppets that actually you will see on stage. Mm -hmm. And you just have to become part of it. So you are together in this. You are one character. When you speak, hi, what's your name? Oh, you can answer, don't be afraid. Hello, can you hear me? I'm asking your name. No, I can't hi, hear pretty you. lady. <laughs> so how about yeah. you take one? I yeah. will give you the red one because it goes well with your So outfit. you see, traditionally, we are used to, you know, like, you know, uh, just the puppets being on stage by themselves? No, we, my theater yeah. requires, I, uh, I always tell actors during the audition, it's not just that you're gonna be covered. You will be there and your puppet will be there. So you, sometimes you talk to each other. Hi, yeah. how are you today? Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. And then only your puppet is talking. And sometimes it's me who is talking, but I'm still my puppet. So we mix all those, uh, uh, concepts of drama theater together with uh, puppet theater and we even sing and dance at the same time. So now, uh, if you think of that puppet, if you look at it, what kind of person is it? What do you think? Is she nice or not too nice? This one is really angry today. Is I she? Know. I think yeah. she's sleepy. She Mine really looks angry. sleepy. Yeah. She's angry? Yeah. Why would she be angry? I don't know. What happened? Looks like they didn't sleep so well. Their Maybe eyes... she wants to talk about it. So she meets with a hey, friend. Hey, what's up? Her buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sleep yesterday night? Yeah, I had such a great night. Ooh, hoo, hoo, I was partying and then I went to bed. What about you? I was awake all night, just watching TV, playing around. Did you watch yourself on, your, on the TV? No, just bits of turtles. This is funny. You really watch turtles. <laughs> oh, I see you did your makeup even. I like it. Yeah, bits of lashes. Show me, show me, right? show me. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I fixed it for you. So for how long have you been doing this? And I'm mesmerized that you did a master's yes. in acting and puppetry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I started, I went to theatrical academy just after I graduated from high school. <gasps> Which year was that? 2000? I think it was 2000? 2004. Yeah. 2004. And since 2004, first you have four years of studying. They teach you, they teach you proper acting and then, so in Poland there's no difference if you're an actor or a puppeteer. You still have to do the acting job. It's, it's a common thing. So a puppet is a tool for the actor to use on stage, like singing or dancing. Great, so I want to leave you to keep doing what you're doing because I found when you're rehearsing. Yes. But just before I go, we brought you a little bit something. Oh, I got a gift. Yeah, you got a gift Sorry. there. <laughs> because I, I was waiting for you to say that, you know, one of the cultures you found in this country is that we love to give. We are very Okay, kind, yes, you know? true. Yeah, so the fact that that's who we are, we just can't help it. I hope it fits. Oh, nice meeting you guys. Okay. I hope I see you guys again soon. So, Kasha, yes. it was really nice How meeting you. Oh, you look like and the it's getting actual cold. owner. It's yeah. getting cold, so it's yeah. perfect. I love so it's it. Thank you. perfect for the weather as well. And I'm not giving it to my husband. <laughs> I'm going to tell it's him gonna, that's what you look, said. Now they even Before look better you know it. Black. So, so thank gonna, you so much thank for your you. time. Yeah, I wish you all the best in everything that you do. Yes, yeah. please come to the I show. Will. I will. All of you. I'll try and make time for that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you and so keep much. Doing and what please you come, do. whoever is watching us with children. Um, but in my shows, even the adults have, have something to laugh at, and children will find something else. 
I really hope you enjoyed Kezia's story tonight and many thanks for watching the show as well. Make sure you join us again next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Kenyan time only on KTN News. And if you have a story you'd like to share with us, please don't hesitate. Give us a write through Globe Traction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at Globe Traction or at KTN News KE. You can also tap that follow button to me on my social media platforms at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and X for more or behind the scenes. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon, same time, same place. Bye-bye for now.